Alrighty, everyone. Uh, well, good morning and or, good morning and welcome once again. Um, this here is my pseudo cast, and this time around for the music, um, just doing doing some usual doing my usual dungeon synth. Um, I'm sorry if this is getting repetitious and boring. It kind of is getting there from my end as well. But uh, thing of it is, is this one here seems to have a great track record um, as far as copyright claims go. Um, that I can recall, I've, none of this music has ever been copyright claimed, so I'm trying to go with what's safest here. So, And for those that don't know, if any of my videos becomes copyright claimed, I delete them immediately. It's not worth the trouble trying to appeal it and all that, and it's just too many hoops you have to jump through. And then, and then especially considering that um, if you're going to appeal a claim, you're appealing it to... The person that gave me the damn cop uh, that flagged your video for copyright to begin with. Like, it's not going to, you know, it's not YouTube that's appealing it. It's the guy who claimed it. So, kind of a, a bit biased there, I'd say. So, oh, and um, also, I'm having a can of V8 Energy peach mango flavored. So, so let's get that going. Okay, but otherwise, uh, for those that don't know, I think it was yesterday or a few days ago, this book came in the mail, so I uh, just started reading it, and um, so far it's some freaking eye-opening stuff. But, um, and this was not the one I wanted, but I'll go with it. But yeah, there's, um, uh, but yeah, these were the buildings of all, and this is, these are the kind of things I like watching right here. These kind of buildings, it's like, um, it's like you know, you run your shop on the lower level, and then you live above it. You live directly on top of it. Um, I've seen quite a few of these buildings back when I was a little kid. But um, again, these were the buildings of old. Um, the, the strong towns guy, he was. I think he said the same thing too. Um, I forgot to write it down, but the. I think the whole chapter is pretty much about uh, incremental development. You know, it's building your um. You know, it's your you're just building this. You know, you basically when it comes to building these houses, you're not being too committal. Like you know, just this, just a little duplex like he like this guy's got. Or, or in this case here, you're building what's called the shotgun house, just a little one room house. Yo, know, but again, you're not, you know, you're not going all in. You're not making a, you're not making a super big commitment. Unlike this here, like a damn big box store. They're going all in here, you know, big old building, big old parking lot. I mean, and great if it's occupied like Walmart or Target or whatnot. It's great. I mean, it's great when, when it's actually active, but when it's not, you got a whole bunch of wasted space right here. You know, and I'll bet the, and I'll, I'll bet, you know, and I don't, I don't know, I don't know if he actually mentioned this in the book, but I'll bet a house like this could probably, could do just as well, if not better, better than a damn big box store. Why? I mean, yeah, great. If, if you know, if Walmart moves in, moved in and took this building over, yeah, it's gonna make them a lot of money, but um, uh, but but on the downside though, that's a whole lot of building you gotta maintain here. You know, repairs are gonna get expensive, and I think he said this too. Um, or the in the game I'm currently playing, City Skylines, I don't think you have to. They don't. I don't think they have a. Uh, they don't have like a like a the buildings don't age per se but what uh, in that game there what you do have to deal with are, are upkeep costs like um you know it'd be you know it'd be it'd be stupid to sit there and just you know build this big monstrous infrastructure build a whole shit ton of roads 
build all this, you know, all this and that, and the other. And, but, you know, and you're gonna pay a shit ton of money on upkeep costs. You know, now, unless you have the, uh, unless you're playing with the infinite punch cheat, you know, then yeah, then yeah, go nuts, but, um, you know, but when I, again, when I play, when I play City Skylines, especially if I don't have the, um, if I don't use any cheats, I'm basically doing the way, um, man, what the hell is that guy's name? Charles Morone, okay. But, but yeah, I think, um, I think, um, Charles was saying the same, was saying the same thing too. It's one of the reasons why uh, cities are the way they are. Is uh, basically it's as though we have this uh, infinite resources cheat. You know, no, you know, no need to plant stuff. You know, no need to build things up incrementally and only a little bit at a time. You know, no need to be careful. I mean, you mess up. Oh well. You know, we can always, you know. We have infinite resources, so we can cover our asses. You know, and that's and um, and back in the day, you know, back, you know, when I had a PlayStation, PlayStation Two, and I had a Game Shark with them. I was using a Game Shark. That was how I played too, like on SimCity, SimCity 2000. No, I don't think I played 3000. Not on a PlayStation, but yeah, 2000. I just went crazy, just completely filled up my map, map full of roads full of uh, water pipes um, I, I built a mountain and then put a whole bunch of waterfall tiles on top on that mountain and then completely cover that mountain afterwards with hydroelectric plants all this because I had the infinite funds cheat you know I was uh, basically I wasn't working smarter not harder I was doing the opposite but uh, in this in this day and age this is exactly again this is why this is why we have car dependent suburbia. And this is also why many of these uh, building these houses that you see, I've seen a lot of these throughout my life. And they're basically, basically all of these are all built at once. And, and Charles Marone said the same thing. These housing divisions that you're seeing, all these suburb, all these suburbs, they're basically, all of them are built. All of it at pretty much the same time. So again, you're, it, they're going all in. Is what they're doing. They're going all in, going all in on the building because it, again, they basically have the infinite resources cheat. So they can just sit here and build shit with gay abandon. You know, but unlike, whereas, uh, whereas this is, this is the kind of stuff you build when you don't have shit for resources, when you have to be, when you have to be resourceful. You know, again, you have to play, you know, you have to play carefully, just like when I play City Skylines without cheats. No, I ain't gonna sit here and completely cover my map with roads and pipes and buildings and whatnot. No, I'm not gonna do that. No, I'm only gonna build, I'm only gonna build a little bit at a time. Only, you know, only enough to stay solvent, to keep from, you know, to keep from running out of money. I mean, easier said than done, of course. And, and yes, I'm still kind of an amateur when it comes to doing my pseudocast this way. I've, this is basically day three of me, um, of this kind of format. Uh, more on that later, though. Just know that, get ready for some mistakes here. But you know, say, but again, same thing here. I actually had another image here. Let me go ahead and. Let me find, let me find the correct one. Nope. Nope. Um, I had a, I had an improved version of this. So I guess um There it is, there it is, I found it. Uh 
Okay. Yeah. Sorry about this. A uh, little bit of a technical difficulty. There we go. That's the one I was looking for. Yeah, this one. And uh, in case anyone's curious, yes, I have watched this show. I watched maybe like the first three or four episodes, but it just didn't do anything for me. Hang on. And plus, uh, I also read it. I also heard and heard. I also watched an interview with this guy, the creator of the show. He, he's got, I mean, he's got the same fascination that I do with these kind of places. It, it looked cool as hell. I mean, again, you're, you know, you're running your business on the, on the bottom level, but you live on the upper level. You know, I mean, we both saw a lot of these when we were kids, like a whole, whole streets lined up with them. So, but like, but you know, going back to what I was saying, this is, uh, you know, this is what you build when, you know, when you don't have very many resources, you know, you know, money, building materials, etc., etc. This is the kind of thing you build when you're trying to be careful. You know, you don't, you don't sit there and you don't sit there and just completely dominate a whole part, you know, a whole parcel of land with nothing but houses. You know, this is the kind of thing you build when price is no object. You know, it just... I guess the word I'm looking for is sloppy. Oh, and, um, I was trying to say this earlier, too, but, um, Chuck was saying the same thing. All of these buildings were built at once. So what's going to end up happening is, uh, they're all going to start, they're all going to start breaking down at once. They're all going to, you know, they're going to, you're going to get roof leaks or whatnot. You're going to, you know, foundations are going to crumble, you know, so on and so forth. But everything's going to start breaking down on these at once. So you're going to have to pay a shit ton of money to keep all that maintained. Whereas in a building like this, and a building like this, I mean, if something, you know, something breaks down, they, you know, this is it. You know, you got a, re got a leaky roof, it's pretty much nothing for you to fix. Because this is the only house you got, you know. Just this little tiny shanty. Oh, and um, in case I didn't mention this earlier, this is what's called a shotgun house. I'm guessing because, um, Houses like this are real easy to aim a shotgun out of. That's what I'm guessing. But so But yeah, like I said, so far I'm really liking this book though. You know, this is going to cost a lot of money to maintain right here. But, sorry to sound like a broken record, but this is the uh, infinite funds mentality right here. This is what results from it. People making these huge commitments. And plus something else I just thought of too. Um, I think I did say this a little while ago too. I'll bet a house like this and a place like this could probably do just as well. Just as well, if not better than than a division like this and a place like this, because you know, you know what, I mean, I think I said this earlier too, if this place is occupied and making money, great. But if for some reason it doesn't, you know, they're, and I think Chuck said the same thing, they're, they're gonna pack up and leave, I mean, they have infinite resources, so no big deal. Sell, you know, sales aren't up to snuff. They just close up shop and off they go, leaving this big old abandoned place here, all this wasted space. I mean, the only people there, the only people that are going to move into a place like this would probably, you know, like a, a Target or a Home Depot or you know, some, some 
you know, some big corporate place like that. But a little, a place like this, man, this place has got to be cheap. And it just occurred to me, this is a painting. Damn, that's some pretty good artwork. Um, there's a signature in the lower right corner. I just noticed that. That's some pretty good artwork. I mean, if it was enough to fool me into thinking that this is a real photo. Damn, but uh, but like I was like I was saying though, I mean, you know, if um, if somebody, you know, if the current occupant decided to move out. I know I know one could easily move into this place right afterwards. I mean, hell, you could even have a even a even a 17-year-old kid who just got his driver's license, and he's like he's like pushing carts at a grocery store. Even somebody like him could afford a place like this. So this place is always going to be occupied. You know, in a place like this. You know, let's say uh, Bob decided to pack up and, you know, decided to pack up and leave. You're going to have a way easier time, you know, somebody else moving in here. Because that's all this is. A little building. You know, and, and plus there are, and plus, unlike this big box store, this big old box here, this would be a very easy place to remodel right here. You know, if you if you don't have a burger restaurant, but if you know if you're if you want to bring in a clothing store, for example, it'd be a hell of a lot easier to just pull up all the benches, get them out of here, get you know get the kitchen, get that out of there, get the counter or keep the counter, but you know get all the other all the other internal stuff, get that out of there, you know, and then bring in your bring in your racks and all your clothes and stuff. It's you know it'd be a lot easier to make a you know a lot easier transition. <laughs> I just noticed this. <laughs> On the left, the funeral. Funeral home and crematorium. So, I got a... When I play City Skylines, I kind of... I'll often have, like, the cemetery. I'll have my cemeteries and crematoriums right next to each other. Because more often than not, by the time my uh, crematoriums become available, my cemeteries are pretty much full. So, just maybe nothing to just... Empty out the cemeteries, burn the corpses. I guess the building on the right is a play on words from uh, Paul Reiser, an actor. So, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move along here. And uh, started watching, started watching some more of his stuff. Um, this time around, because he's been up, uh, I actually looked on his channel, and yeah, he's he's been a busy little beaver. Um, he's, I think uh, he goes he goes as far back as uh, seven years, I think, seven years worth of videos. So, so, but um. Uh, so I just went ahead and started with this very, 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 very first video, which is um, which is, which is him uh, using a, uh, or he's making a, uh, I think he's making the floor. He's making the floor in his house right now with this. I'm in, and, and I've never seen these kind of chainsaws before. They're called milling chainsaws. But like I said, I've never seen them. I, you know, and you know, something I've had in the back of my mind. I've always wondered how they did this. You know, the process of taking logs and making them into lumber. I mean, I mean, up up until up until today, my only knowledge of it is uh, playing real-time strategy games like Warcraft and Age of Empires, where your your grunts or peasants just run out and. Chop down trees and carry the wood to the lumber where lumber mill where somehow just ah oh, they turn they magically turn into lumber. But I never totally ignorant of the actual process of doing that. But well, here's my answer: a 
million chainsaw. And, um, but uh, the way I think, I think the way, the way they work is there's probably some kind of, some kind of knob mechanism. Like you, yeah, I don't think I could, um, uh, it's nowhere to be found. But anyway, I don't, I can't, um, I can't hover my mouse over it, but there is probably like a, if you can see like towards the base, like where the hand, where the, um, the chainsaw handle is, it looks like there's a little knob, like a little knob that you turn. I think that, uh, that raises and lowers the big silver thing. The, the black handle in the middle, in the middle of the, the, the silver thing. I don't know what the technical name for it is, but, um. It looks like you can raise and lower the level, the the cutting thickness, like how thick you want to cut it. So yeah, I think he's cutting um, I think he's cutting one inch, one inch slices off these uh, logs. So, but but yeah, um, I don't know if I'll be able to if I'll. If I'll be able to watch all of his videos, like I said, he goes back about seven years, so that's a lot of videos he put out. Cause he's doc he's documenting the whole process. Like from the foundation to what he's doing here, making the floorboards. Um I think he uh I think he's even got a he's got an episode where he made a he made a wind turbine. Like he, he's like he's made, it's like a, it's like a homemade wind turbine or uh, there's a, there's a, there's a term I'm looking for. I don't know what it is, but like a, like, yeah, he's, li he's living off the grid, but he's using a wind turbine. He's using a, I think it was a wind turbine. I don't know the exact term, but it was, it was pretty advanced stuff. So, so big time surprise there. Okay, um, but that's pretty much all I had to say on that. So, um, but, uh, just gonna, just gonna talk a little more about, uh, me trying to find an easier way of doing this that doesn't involve, uh, making a whole bunch of, uh, windows and sources on my OBS program. I actually looked into a few more, uh, slideshow programs. Uh, most of them, most of them didn't work. For one reason or another, the closest that I could find, uh, what had a, it has like the, it has like the, the timer, the timeline meter at the bottom. And I have no way of getting rid, I have no way of getting rid of it. And plus, uh, despite the, despite there being an option on this one, where you could, uh, you can do a manual slideshow. It still start. It still starts at like a normal movie anyway. Like every time, like every time I want to switch images, I have to push spacebar to pause the to pause the slideshow. So that 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 got very tedious. And then um, I think I mentioned this yesterday too. I found out that uh, it was a Microsoft PowerPoint where you have you have to give them your credit card info just to download it, like, e even the free trial version, you still have to give them your credit card info, I'm like, eh, nope. I ain't, I ain't falling for that crap. I mean, I don't even care if you can cancel immediately after, after getting it, I'm not, you know, the only time I want to give somebody my credit card info is if I'm going to actually buy their product. So, I, little scamish right there. But, um, there was another one. There was another that that worked almost as well, but um, one problem I had with it is that uh, I try to change the hotkeys on it or some of the hotkeys, and basically the program locked up. Like I can't advance it. I can't advance the slide. I can't. I could hardly do anything except move around through the menus. So, and then there's this um, and then uh, the the program also stuck me with this watermark. Like it's it's literally it's literally a watermark window. It's an actual window, but you can't close it. 
and uh, this little this little watermark window it actually persists throughout your entire computer. Like it 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 isn't just it isn't it isn't just on the slideshow program. Like it can it can be on your it can be on your desktop background as well. That kind. It's like like it's an actual window unto itself. I've never seen that before. Usually when I when I get stuck with a watermark, it's like part of the program, not part of your computer. I had to actually I had to actually go on my task manager. After I uninstalled this program, the watermark pro, the, the watermark window was still there. I had to actually go on my uh my task man my task manager and close the damn close the damn process just to get the damn watermark off of there. But never seen that before. So um but yeah, I'm still going to keep looking though. Still got to keep looking for a program that works way better than what I'm work what I'm doing right now. Cuz this is like I said, this is very tedious right here. And uh, and again for those for those for those that don't know, um Let me just open them all up. No, it's going down the line. But the way I'm doing this, these are all these are all uh, they're full screen paint images. So we're looking at at least 20 windows that I have active right now. And um, I'm using my uh, my OBS program. It's what I use for streaming and recording videos. It's now acting as a kind of switchboard. So yeah, switching them, yeah, switching them on and off. But, but yeah, you get the, you get the picture. But so I'm I'm trying to find something that's a lot that's. I'm trying to find a program that's a lot easier for me to use than me having to sit here and open up all these windows and then turn around and have to do the switchboard thing on my OBS program. It's, it's very tedious. So, And on top of that, it's also causing me to have to start the pseudocast a lot sooner too. I used to, I used to start because... Because for the longest time, all I did, because you know, I used to start this at 4 a.m. I now basically have to get this started at like 3.30 a.m. I have to get it started a half an hour early just to get all the, uh, just to get all the images set up on my OBS and all that. It, but it used to just be me, me and this. That was it. But, um, at some point a few days ago, I um I experimented by uh, posting up an image, and it just kind of got good to me. I'm like, hmm, maybe I should do more of that. It just it just kind of got me curious. So, but all right, um, but. I'm just going to go ahead and call it good here, though. Um, I have pretty much said all the things I wanted to say, and I kind of went a little over long here. But, um, I, but again, uh, due, to the way I'm, due to the way I have to do this right now, it's also causing, me, it's also causing these cast videos to go a little, little over long. So, so but, but, um, but otherwise, hey, thanks for, um, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And um, I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. And um, also tomorrow, if um, if I just go, if I just go back, if I just go back to my original format, just, just me, and this video here, the video thumbnail, don't be surprised. So, but uh, but until then, though, everybody, thanks again for coming around, and uh, see you all next time. Bye for now.